All right, we good? Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. We have a great day here today. We're going to have some proclamations and some presentations um, to heroes, both department and civilian. Uh, just so we know the order of play today, uh, we'll have remarks by the police commissioner, followed by the mayor of the city of New York, Eric Adams, followed by chief of detectives, James Essig, followed by MTA chairman, Jano Lieber, and then uh, the presentations. There is no Q&A um, after this. Uh, it's just going to be the presentations. Uh, but it's a great story uh, about great people and a great team working together. So let me bring to you Police Commissioner of the City of New York, Keyshawn Sewell. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. On behalf of our executive team and the entire New York City Police Department, thank you so much. We are joined here today by New York City Mayor Eric Adams, by our partners John DeVito, the special agent in charge of the New York Field Office of the ATF, Ralph Sozio, U.S. Marshal for the Southern District of New York, who is our partner in the Regional Fugitive Task Force, Jana Lieber, the Chair and CEO of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, Isaac Rothbart, Chief Financial Officer of the New York City Police Foundation, and by several members of the NYPD and the public who are being recognized for their exceptional work they did together after the attack on rush hour commuters a week ago. The mayor will recognize them in a moment, but I want to say that each of these individuals exemplifies the determination and courage that makes us all proud to be New Yorkers. Their actions remind us every day in every corner of our city we are surrounded by heroes, some of whom wear the NYPD uniform and others who live and work in New York but are often the strongest allies and our proudest partners in the NYPD. Behind each one of these officers, there are teams of other members who contributed to this effort. There just isn't a room big enough to hold them all. The work of these officers and civilians is further proof that public safety in New York City is truly a shared responsibility. Shortly before 8.30 a.m. last Tuesday, 911 calls streamed in. A northbound N train in Brooklyn was under attack. Innocent victims were harmed. From those first moments after the attack, as they do in every case, NYPD officers and investigators rushed toward danger, even amid reports that there were still live explosives on the train. As the Austin bomb squad secured the scene, officers helped rescue the wounded and continued working to gather evidence, identify a suspect, and build a case. Their meticulous work accomplished a tremendous amount in a very short period of time to connect a key to a van, and that van to a name, and then a picture to a person of interest. We then connected the purchase of the gun recovered at the scene to the same person, who then became our suspect. As thousands of investigators and officers searched for that suspect throughout the day and night on Tuesday, a strategic decision was made to publicly identify the shooter, disseminate his photo, and engage the eyes and ears of millions of New Yorkers in tracking him down. The New York City Police Foundation stepped forward and contributed $25,000, half of the total $50,000 reward. The detective work was solid, and the decision to engage New Yorkers was working. It caused the assailant's world to close in around him, giving him nowhere left to run, and little option to call the tip line himself because he was seeing his photograph everywhere. In truth, by the time his self-initiated tip came in, several everyday New Yorkers had already stepped up and, and done the same. Each saw something troubling and took action. One took photos and posted them to social media, which led him to detectives and then to Crime Stoppers. At the same time, resources were deployed to the area around Canal Street to intensify that search. Three others then spotted the suspect and flagged down officers on patrol. These Good Samaritans provided timely, accurate information that enhanced and sharpened the NYPD's efforts. This teamwork, police officers and the public joining forces is what makes all of us proud. 
It was said nearly 200 years ago that the police are the public and the public are the police. As the mayor said well last week, we got them. Working together, we got a violent offender off the streets. Our success in this investigation highlights how the public is such an effective force multiplier in our public safety mission. So to all of you, our uniformed officers, our brave force responders, our detectives, the dogged investigators you are, and to our dedicated civilians, partners, and friends, please know how grateful I am to all of you. Last week, our city was once again on the world stage, and your civic mindedness and collaboration showed everyone why this is the best city with the best people anywhere. You should all be incredibly proud, and you should know how truly proud this city is of all of you. New York owes you a debt of gratitude, and we are honored to have you with us today. And now I'd like to introduce the mayor for the city of New York, Eric Adams. Thank you so much for your powerful words. <clears throat> and, you know, I also want to personally thank the police commissioner. Uh, on that day last week, when she texted me early in the morning, after our morning briefing, I started to get dressed and leave Gracie Mansion. And then I said, Don, if you have COVID, where are you going? And it was only after the first hour or so of her constant communication, knowing I was going through an anxiety of not being there on the ground. And she kept me updated. And I watched the unfolding of the professionalism that comes with not only the, the police department, but this city. I saw the videos of the passengers helping their fellow New Yorkers as, as they left the trains. I saw the notifications of a dangerous truck in our community and the detectives and police officers going to do the grid search to identify that truck, placing us all at ease. I saw the FBI and the ATF and the governor. I saw this complete picture of what makes New York, New York. And I don't know if you're the one, the young man in the back, who sent out that first tweet. And when I read your story, when people t state that young people are not engaged and not involved, you turned that question mark into an exclamation point of you're damn right this is your city too. Doesn't matter if you eight or 80, we are New Yorkers. And poor chief of detectives, you're so darn good that they looked at 30 hours catching the bad guys and criticizing. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Three days to take to get the Boston bomber. Case after case after case you solve. No matter what it is, your detectives are doing the good old fashioned work to get it done. And my brother, Lieber, your teams responded miraculously. Always there. The partnership between the M M NYPD and MTA is so impressive. You and I have the same mission combined to that mission. And no matter what all your guys did, people tried to turn that story around. We're joined at the hip. We're going to make sure our system is safe. And I'm proud to serve with you every day as we do it together. And my men and women of the New York City Police Department, the subtext to this story are the names who called in the tips. I bet you if you were to ask them, they're probably first generation New Yorkers. They're probably the first to really participate in this dream we call the American dream. But they love this city so much that they went after the person that tried to destroy our way of life. And I hear some say, well, he called himself in. Listen, if a rat rolls in his own hole, it's because we closed around him and he had nowhere else to go. He was smart to turn himself in. That is why he turned himself in, not because he was altruistic because of the job we did that gave him no other choice but to turn himself in. We did it right. And don't let naysayers tell you that as a city, we did not respond correctly. We saw the threat. 
We identified the threat. We arrested the threat. And our city is better because of that. Better because of that. And so those who wore uniforms, the blue uniforms, or blue jeans, everyday New Yorkers came together. And today is one of the many acknowledgments that we are making with our TA employees last week, the civilians and the law enforcement coming together today and saying thank you. Canvassing of areas to see video footage, interviewing witnesses, tracking down the gun, finding the van, identifying where the gun was purchased. All of our partners come together. We need to celebrate who we are. Not allow one person that created that act to believe we are not New Yorkers and the resiliency of our city. But his apprehension is a message to everyone that believes they can carry a gun and carve bullets of hate and destruction through our community. We will find you, we will arrest you, we will prosecute you. This city belongs to us. It belongs to that young man there that's aggravating his mom right now. <laughs> that's the beauty of this city. The city belongs to you, young man. This is your city, and we're going to make sure you grow up in this city free for hurt, harm, and danger. That's why we do this every day. That's the promise I'm giving you as your mayor. That's the promise the police commission is giving you. That's the promise these men and women up here are giving you. The city belongs to you and your family and the families of New Yorkers. Thank you. And now the man who will be forever known as the poor chief of detectives, James, <laughs> James Essex. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, the, the NYPD does have some of the greatest detectives in the world. We have seen this time and time again as they have quickly arrested brutal and deranged criminals. But many of these incidents, high profile and non-media stories, we ask for the public's help. That's why we put out videos, the still shots to the media. In many cases, this one in particular, where a vicious and unprovoked attack on strap hangers occurred, the public answered that call. So first and foremost, I want to thank the members of the public for their numerous tips, the people being honored here today. I want to thank Joe Galata, the chief of Brooklyn South Detectives, who spearheaded this investigation with his team. The media for getting out that, those stills, that video that helped us solve this case. Uh, the ATF, the FBI, the Eastern District, the U.S. Marshals, the New York City Police Foundation, Sue Birnbaum, Isaac Rothberg, and uh, can't speak highly enough of the cooperation in this case. It was great. So with that, I'd just like to turn it over to the chairman of the MTA, Jen Oliva. How do you follow this, Mayor? <laughs> wow. I, I just have a couple of things I want to say. I want to say thank you, first of all, to Mayor Adams, to Police Commissioner Sewell for bringing us together here today. I know I speak for Governor Hochul when I say thank you for all you're doing. All of us at the MTA are incredibly grateful for the partnership, Mayor, that you talked about so movingly. Last week's shooting was a horrific moment for New York, but it showed us the best of our city, as tragedy often does. The mayor spoke about this again so movingly. From people on the platforms helping to triage victims to the MTA's own heroic workers who were honored at City Hall last week, and of course the dogged investigators and the alert tipsters who have helped to bring the subject, suspect to justice. Today, today we're celebrating that last group, the NYPD, federal law enforcement partners, and the civilians who called in the tips. The transit system, I always say, is New York's most important and iconic public space. It doesn't feel like a church or a synagogue or a mosque, but I say it's sacred space. It's because it's the place we share where we prove every day that people of all varieties and backgrounds 
can come together, get along, and create something special. We rely on each other underground because this essential ecosystem only works if we have each other's backs. And the shooting last week proved again that we do. Now, I'm not going to disagree that cash incentives are obviously helpful, um, but we know that our fellow New Yorkers are always using their eyes and ears to help, irrespective of cash incentives, to help each other. Tipsters who help the police are usually anonymous, so it's special to be with you all today to be able to acknowledge them in person on behalf of Governor Hochul and of all New York City commuters. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, thank you to our NYT PD partners who come through us, come through for us every day, along with the ATF, the FBI, the marshals, and everybody in law enforcement who worked this case. Keeping the transit system safe is a 24-7 job, and we're going to work, keep working with Commissioner Sewell, with Chief Wilcox, and the entire team every day. I was out in Brooklyn early this morning to check out some of the joint city and state end-of-line operations at key stations, Flatbush, Brooklyn College, Stillwell. I got a chance to speak to some of the officers and to thank them for what they're doing every day, not just on days of incredible drama and heroism as we're celebrating today, but that kind of dedication that I see and that I uh, speak with officers about starts at the top. So I cannot finish by thanking Mayor Adams for your incredible leadership for making subway safety one of your top priorities and to Commissioner Sewell for making it real. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to get to the part we're all here for, which is we're going to present some proclamations. So our first goes to Deputy Inspector Ralph Clement, Commanding Officer of the 9th Precinct. Now to the team that affected the arrest, Sergeant James Keating of the 9th Precinct. Sergeant Keating's operator, Detective Specialist Sean Donahue from the 9th Precinct. Thirty hours is a long time, especially if you work the whole thirty hours without sleeping. <laughs> Deputy Chief Joseph Galata, Commanding Officer, Detective Borough, Brooklyn South. <laughs> Lieutenant, Commander of Detectives, Sean Collins, Commanding Officer, Brooklyn South Homicide. Sergeant Jacqueline Catalano, Commanding Officer of the 72nd Precinct Detective Squad. Detective Anthony Biondolillo, Common Spelling, 72nd Precinct Detective Squad. He is the case detective. And we do all of this with our federal partners, and they are accepting for their agencies and their agents. John DeVito, Special Agent in Charge, New York Field Division of the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Now, we would have here, and I should mention, Mike Driscoll from the FBI. Mike has been called to an emergency um, involving uh, a shooting in Yonkers. Uh, so I will accept for the JTTF. Uh, and that brings us to Ralph Sozio, 
United States Marshal for the Southern District of New York. <laughs> Ralph is in charge of the regional fugitive task force which was on the hunt for the suspect in this case till he surrendered. Mr. Francisco Puebla. Francisco. Paso. <laughs> As you know, Francisco and two other individuals were involved in pointing out the suspect to the officers when they arrived on the scene. Mr. Sheikh Mohammed. And Mr. Zach Tahan. You could have done the arrest yourself, man. <laughs> and the man who combines social media acumen with camera work and citizenry, Mr. Jack Griffin. So the theme today, obviously, is about partnership, about teamwork, and as the police commissioner said, that we are all in this together as police and citizens. That concludes our ceremony for today. What do we got? That concludes our ceremony for today. We're going to be doing photographs to the right of the podium with our awardees. cameras here so we're all looking at the same camera Thank you, everyone.